Well, hey friends, it's Mandy with Sweetly Home, and I'm filming this intro now for like the sixth time. Each time, <laughs> just, it's been bad. Um, and I don't think this time is going to be much better. I've got my washing machine and my dryer on the other side of this wall making a lot of noise. My kiddos are playing, and I'm actually filming on my iPhone. So, this is just kind of my <laughs> my real mom life at this moment. Um, nothing fancy here. Today I want to share with you my Christmas planner. This planner has been an absolute labor of love and I am so excited to have it completed and to have created a tool that is going to help me plan Christmas intentionally. So last year I was a nut bar when it came to Christmas. Um, I wanted to have just a really great Christmas and I am new to planning Christmas for my family. I came from um, a line of women who were amazing homemakers who put on the best holidays uh, and I wanted to bring that tradition into my own family. But nobody ever taught me how to actually have a well-run Christmas. Um, and so last year I just sort of fell apart. Um, I had a few meltdowns. I just, I wasn't as planned as I should have been. I didn't do things ahead of time. Uh, and it was, I was a mess. My family had a wonderful time. I didn't take it out on them, but I was a wreck. And I determined that this year was going to be different. And so I have a few things set in place already that I'm going to share with you in other videos. This video is just simply going to be about the Christmas Binder. So this tool is 47 pages and I created all of them myself um, and I decided that I was going to allow you to be able to download this if you find that it would be a tool that would be helpful for you. Totally free of charge. Just find the link down in the description box. All I ask is that maybe you just give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Um, leave me a comment if you'd like and to share it with anybody um, that you think would maybe like these printables for a Christmas binder. So I'm not going to talk too much about it because the video is long enough um, as I walk you through everything. But I did want to mention that I tried to make this a tool that would work for as many people as possible. So when I plan, I love to just have like kind of a sheet of paper in front of me and just write and write and write. Um, I'm not somebody who really likes lots of boxes and columns and things of that nature. However, I know some people love to plan in that fashion. So I have kind of provided for that with some of the sheets. So you'll find that some of the sheets um, maybe are multiple sheets. Um, like there's a couple different styles for that sheet. So you don't feel like you have to print everything. Um, I've also included some note paper so that you can back some of the pages with additional paper to kind of write things. I'm sorry for the noise. Just this is my life. <laughs> um, and uh, anyways, and so you can kind of pick and choose what works best for you and your family and your traditions and how you celebrate the Christmas season. So I hope that this is a tool that works for you and that uh, works well for you. I am not going to film an outro. I'm just going to say goodbye to you right now. Of course, watch the rest of the video. <laughs> Um, but I hope that you enjoy this. Let me know any questions or um, anything down in the description box. This pr 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 these printables are probably not perfect. Um, that's just the name of the game. It's just probably not totally perfect. Um, I just hope though that they will be a tool and a resource for you to plan an intentional Christmas and to get started early so that you're not a raving loon like I was last year. <laughs> Anyways, I will um, see you guys in my next video and let's get on to the binder. Okay friends, so here is my Christmas planner. It's all laid out in this binder and this is actually a better binder from Staples. So the thing about the better binders is that they are reinforced with rubber around all of the areas where a typical binder would normally tear. The other thing that the gal told me at Staples is that all Staple brand products are lifetime guaranteed. So if this does happen to break in one of these areas, I can go ahead and return it and they will um, give me a new one. So. I figured that because I'm going to be in and out of this binder so much, I figured I would just go ahead and spend a few extra dollars more to get the better binder. I got the two inch size, was it two inch? It's either one and a half or two inches. I think it's one and a half. Um, 
there's a little window here on the side where you can write, you know, Christmas planner or whatever particular <laughs> binder it is that you are doing. It comes in lots of different colors. I opted just to go with the white because I like just the simple, clean, classic look of white. Now I made this printable that goes right inside of the cover. Feel free to, you know, do your own thing, add scrapbook paper, don't add anything, add this, make your own thing, <laughs> you know, you do you. Um, but I opted to just kind of go with this simple little look. And So another thing that I really liked about this particular binder is that it just has this one touch opening to the clamps so that you're not kind of like pulling these apart. Um, some binders can be really kind of fussy and tricky, but it's just nice that you have this little tab and it opens and closes super easily. And right here is where you can insert um, a little paper and put your uh, binder name on that. So one thing that I loved about the Better Binder and one major reason that I went with it is because it came with this poly envelope already attached inside the binder. I was going to add some sort of envelope system anyways to hold my receipts, but because it already came standard in the Better Binder, it was just a win-win. It has this nice little enclosure here so that I can add all of my receipts. And I did go ahead and use my Cricut, and I made a vinyl decal that said receipts, and I just added that here onto the binder itself. Okay, so this is what the pages look like. Now, I opted to use as much paper as possible when printing these. I went with the idea that I was going to put these in sheet cover protectors because I wanted my paperwork to stay clean. I know that as a busy mom, sometimes you know your hands get dirty or you are using this to hold your recipes and things get splattered. I didn't want my pages to get a mess. Um, I like the idea of using the sheet protector. So I designed that with the with that in mind. So there is not a lot of space on the side here to just hole punch your papers. So keep that in mind if you do happen to print this. So I just sort of went with a really um, simple kind of look, tan and a bit of red and then some green and some of the accents. Um, I've started out with the master to-do list. I kind of want this in front of me, <laughs> front and center, so I know what I need to do. I have this little section up here for notes, and I kind of designed that so that I could put things that I really need attention to right there. On a lot of the pages, I do have a Bible verse at the bottom, and it goes, a lot of them kind of um, just go right through the Christmas story. And then I have um, just some little accents. So these are lined sheets, and you can, you know, fill this out how you need to, but this is the master to-do list. Now on the back of the master to-do list, I opted to double side print this and I printed a piece of note paper. So I did design a note paper. There's a bit of a heading here at the top, a little Christmas tree at the bottom, and some nice light lines for you to, you know, add your more of your master to-do list. Um, now this is its own separate page, so you can use this to print on the back of any one of these printables. Next I have a weekly to-do list and it goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and then the weekend and then again I do have a spot here for notes and you are free to use that how you see fit but for me it's going to be something that um, I really need to keep my focus on or draw my attention to. Now I went ahead and I printed a few of these leading up to Christmas and I did them double sided and I have them all here in one sheet protector. Next is a shopping list, and again, I opted to print just a couple of these because it has six spaces for different stores. So my thought is, is that I can fill this out when I go on, you know, a weekly shopping trip or I have lots of stops to make. I can individually list which stores I'm going to and what I need at those stores. Again, there's a spot at the top to write notes. And I printed a couple of these, but I also have another sheet design. This is another shopping list, and this one has four stores, and it has larger boxes. So if you need something, you know, if you need to write a lot more, you've got more space within this shopping list. Next up is a budget sheet. You've got a space for your category, your budget goal, your actual expenses, any notes that you need to write. You've got a space for a date, the store or the description of the item, the category and how much money it was, and then a space at the bottom to write some notes. 
Then I have an online gift tracker, and there's a spot to write your gift, the website, how much it was, the tracking number, um, the ship date, and a check mark to denote if you actually receive that item or not. And at the top, there is a space for notes. And then on the back of that, I have a thank you list. And again, these sheets, a lot of them are actually just separate, added into one sheet protector to kind of save space. And some of these things are double-sided printed. And so it made sense to me just in how I laid this out and what my brain would be thinking. Um, and so putting the thank you list at the beginning of the book will make sure that I'm, you know, knowing where that's at and making sure that these thank you notes happen. So um, again, a spot for notes, a space to write the gift, who it was from, and then a check mark if you sent that thank you list or not. And then at the bottom, I have a Bible verse. Now, this sheet is for your wrapping supplies. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I get... Um, I think I have things that I really don't. So I'm going through my wrapping supplies, figuring out what I need um, and what I already have so that I'm not buying too much of one thing and not enough of the other. And when I'm actually in the store, I can pick up what I need because I have a plan in place. So this has a spot for all of the wrapping supplies, your tape, your gift tags, your boxes, um, wrapping paper, anything specific write it all down. A pen, um, if you need like a specific kind of marking pen, write that down. Um, a store or a website where you are picking those things up. Some people get really fancy with their packages and they order things special for um, their packages. So write that information here and then a check mark of whether you have it or not. So um, you can write everything that you need, the places where you're going to get it, and then if you already have purchased it, check it off. Um, any details, like if you do sort of a color theme, um, you can write those details in here. And then again, a spot for notes. I have a cards to send sheet, a spot for notes, the recipient, the address, and then a check mark if you have sent it or not, and a Bible verse down here at the bottom. And if you're doing any traveling this season, we've got a sheet for some travel plans. So up here, um, you can write your location, the date you're leaving, the time that you're leaving, and the date that you are returning. Um, and I would actually print a page for each trip that I'm taking. So if we were going to do like a couple trips during the holidays, I would have a different sheet for each trip. You've got a space here of things to pack, a to-do list, um, directions, and any travel information, and then this spot right here is a remember spot. If there's something that you really need to remember, like your passports or your tickets or, you know, the kids' special stuffy animals that they need to sleep with, make sure that you put it in your remember spot. Now on the back of that, I did go ahead and I added a note paper because I know that I really like detailed packing lists and really like to be detailed about my traveling. I wanted to have more space um, if I need it. So I just printed double-sided the travel paper and then the note paper on the back. Next we've got a sheet for your holiday decor. So up here you can write the room that you're working on and any notes about that particular room or your inspiration, things like that. Um, so there's a spot here and then just some lines to write out any thoughts, maybe things that you need to get, um, any spots where you're finding inspiration. And then you've got lots of blank space where you can actually sketch out some designs or you can tape some inspiration pictures down here. But I've left it blank for you to kind of just work out how you need. And I printed, um, I printed a couple of these for the different spaces in my house. So I'll probably do one for my living room, one for my dining area and my entrance area, one for my kitchen, and then probably one for the bedrooms. You could also do one for maybe your outside um, or any special rooms that you have in your house that you want to decorate. Next is your bucket list. So lots of people like to make a bucket list, and it's kind of fun to sit down with your family and figure out what their favorite things are are to do during the holidays are things that they want to do. Um, so I've made a nice big space for you just to sit here and kind of write out those, those dreams and those hopes for the holidays. There's a spot up here for notes, maybe anything that, again, like people really want to make happen or just anything that you want to remember goes up in the notes section. And again, a Bible verse at the bottom to celebrate the season. On the back of that, I have a countdown to Christmas. Um, I ch again, I tried to think of different sheets that people would need. You might not need all of these sheets, and some of this might kind of overlap in how your family does things. So you may only need 
one particular type of sheet, but there are lots of options here for hopefully lots of different people. So we have a countdown to Christmas. Um, I think I'm pretty certain that I made 25 lines here. I think there's actually maybe 27, um, but I would again go ahead and probably just print some note paper on the back if you find that one line isn't going to be enough for your countdown to Christmas. Over here I have a sheet for your advent calendar, so if you want to do some planning for your advent calendar, maybe different um, activities or Bible verses or scriptures to read, stories to read, different things like that, get your ideas down here in the planning section and then you have a spot over here for your final plans. And again, I believe there are 25 lines here um, that you can write um, what you plan to do for each day and you can certainly always print a piece of note paper to put on the back of this to extend um, extend your thoughts and extend your planning. So then I do have a 25 days of Christmas so again some people do a countdown of Christmas some people do 25 days of Christmas however you do things there are different pages again um, for how maybe you like to plan or how you like to celebrate the season. I've got a sheet here for Elf on the Shelf and then we have a page for our traditions. So this is a great space to write your traditions so that you don't forget things. And this is a great time to sit down with your family again and figure out their favorite traditions um, so that you can make sure that those things happen each year. And on the back, I added note paper. And then this is always a big one for me during the holidays is movies to watch. So you can write them down, you can plan different snacks that you want to have, or if you have specific nights that you want to watch movies, get all those thoughts down here on the paper. If there are movies that you need to buy, um, go ahead and write those down too so you can um, order them from Amazon or find them at Walmart or whatever you need to do. Now, this is your gift ideas sheet. So I have made this for each person that you are buying gifts for. So I have a spot up here for the name, the age, the size, and the budget for each person. And I have went ahead and printed just several different ones of these. I have one for each family member, um, and then I have some for specific people that I know that I'm going to be buying for. So um, my th thought is that I am going, I have them all in one sheet protector now. I'm actually going to move them all into separate um, sheet protectors. I found some more sheet protectors in my office. Um, it's sort of run out of some and I wanted to get this filmed. So um, I would have one sheet protector for each person. Now this is just a spot to write gift ideas. This is not your final gift list unless you want it to be. Um, but this is just a place to kind of brainstorm. If something pops in your head, you turn to the sheet and you write it down. So it's out of your head and you're not trying to remember anything. We have another spot in this planner for you to actually write down all of the gifts that you are purchasing as well as a wish list. We'll get to those next. So next is a gift inventory. If you're like me, then you may have been buying throughout the year, or maybe you found different random things here and there that you thought would make a great gift, and you actually have a gift inventory. So this is a spot where you can write down all of the things that you have on hand for stocking stuffers or gifts um, and what have you. It's all here to record into your gift inventory. Okay, so here's that wish list that we were talking about. Now this is the type of thing that you are going to give the people in your life who you want to know what they want for Christmas. So basically I printed one for each of my kiddos and my husband and then I have one or two printed for family members. So my thought is that I will probably just do each family, um, like my my sister and their kiddos, uh, my sisters and their kiddos, um, they will each get a wish list. And I'll probably do one for my husband's family um, and just kind of keeping those gifts kind of on one sheet Whereas my family, my immediate family, I will do on one wish list per person. And again, I will have each of these in a different um, page protector. We've got a spot up here for your, the name, the age, the size, and their top gift. Now this is a page that's probably not going to apply to everybody, but it does apply in my family, um, and that is birthday planning. So my husband's birthday is the beginning of December, my daughter's birthday is a couple days before Christmas, and my son's birthday is two weeks after Christmas. Uh, my best friend has a birthday in December, there's lots of birthday planning going on for Christmas, and that's another reason that I really want to stay um, organized 
during the holiday season because there is so much that's going on for our family. So I do have this birthday planning sheet. If this is applicable to you, by all means, go ahead and print it. Um, basically, it's just a sheet for me to get all of the thoughts in my head out onto paper. So I've got a name, a date, um, any their size, and any notes that I need to make for the birthday. On the next sheet is stocking stuffers. This sheet is sort of a brainstorming sheet of all of the ideas that I have for their stockings. So um, I've got a spot up here for their name, their age, the size, and then a budget. Now this sheet is the gift planner. So this column here is for your gift idea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write each gift that I'm getting that particular person. So this is kind of my final gift list. I went through the I, gift ideas that I thought about getting them. We went through their wish list and then this is sort of the final gift planner. This is these, this is what they're getting. Um, and so I've got a spot for the gift idea, the store and the website, um, how much money it will be and if I got that gift already and any notes. Next, we've got a sheet for giving to others. So others could be anybody. This could be a charity. This could be people in your family. This could be extended family. This could be friends. This could be teachers, whoever you are planning to gift to. Um, we've got a space here for the name, the budget, the gift, and any notes. And again, you can print as many of these as you need and a spot up here for notes as well. Next, I have a sheet for handmade gift ideas. Um, one of the things that we are doing as a family is I want to have each of my kiddos have a handmade gift. We did this last year and they really loved it um, and that was a really special thing for me as a mom to make my kiddos a gift so that's another thing that we're going to go ahead and do this year. So um, I have just some handmade gift ideas, um, a spot for notes, the name of who is going to get that, the gift, so what you, whatever it is that you're making, any supplies that you need, and instructions. And then down at the bottom is a spot to write any details or to draw any pictures um, for what you need for that handmade gift. Then I've got a sheet for handmade crafts. I am a crafty girl. I love to craft, and there's nothing like the holidays that brings out that crafting spirit in me. So hashtag craft all the things. <laughs> um, so I have a spot here for handmade crafts. I've got a spot for notes um, and then a couple different boxes and they say the same things but basically you've got a line to write what craft it is, any supplies that you need, and then your instructions. So you can actually fit two crafts on this one page and then you can go ahead and um, print, a, print a second one on the back which is what I've done, a double sided printed. So to help you avoid the trap of not having what you need when it comes to pictures, like holiday pictures, or special events, or parties, or church services, whatever it is, we've got a spot for what to wear. Um, so basically what you can do in each of these boxes, they're for a different person, you can write what, what clothing items they need. So for me, my kiddos will have one Christmas outfit and they'll wear that for different events. Um, it just works easiest for us. So basically what I would do is I would write my kiddo's name on this line and then I've got a spot for the clothing. So I would write everything that they would need to complete that outfit all the way down to shoes and any accessories. If I don't have those items, I've got a spot and where to purchase them, how much that item is, and then a check mark to denote if I have picked it up or not, if I've already purchased it or not. Um, I have been caught <laughs> many a time not having what I need and this sheet is really going to save my butt. So I'm also going to do this for myself and also for my husband. So I did go ahead and I printed a sheet for my husband and I so that he has his outfit and I have mine and when it comes time to the, for those events, we've got what we need and we've got it ahead of time. Now I went so far as to actually allow you to be able to use these sheets like if you have different outfits that you're going to wear for different parties and whatnot there is a spot up here where you can denote that particular event the date the time and the location um, and each person also has a spot for the budget so if you have a, a specific budget for clothing for the holidays and you need to divide that up between everybody you've got a spot here to keep track of that budget 
Next, I have just a very generic guest list. So if you need a guest list for anything, you've got 15 slots here to write each guest. Um, their contact information and then a check mark if they've RSVP'd or not or if you've you know sent the invitation whatever you need that check mark for it's there for you and you've got a spot up here for notes so again you could write any inv information about that particular event or anything about maybe the invitation that you're sending whatever you need you've got space here but again it's just a really generic guest list for any sort of event that you're planning and I have a timeline for you. So the timeline, again, is just very generic, and you could use this for any kind of event that you are hosting or planning, but the timeline comes in so handy, especially if you are needing to cook things or you need to get things done before people arrive or you have specific times that you need to do certain things. Timeline can come in really handy. So at the top here, I've got a space to write your event, the date, the time, and the location. And then I've got a, just a bunch of blank lines for you to write the time and then a bunch of blank lines to write any notes. So if you are using this to kind of map out your cooking times for you know Christmas Day, you can write the times that things need to go in the oven and then your notes over here about what that item is, any temperature, um, and how long it needs to cook, whatever you need. You've got lots of space here to fill that out for how you need. Now, on the back of this, you could print another timeline if you find that you're running out of space, or you could print a piece of notebook paper on the back. And again, you don't have to print that notebook paper. For me, I just really like lines. I'm all over the map when it comes to writing, um, and I need some lines to kind of hold me in place. So next we've got a Christmas Eve box. This is one tradition that my family absolutely loves, and I love doing it for my kiddos. This is just kind of a blank area where you can plan what you want to put in your Christmas Eve box. And then any notes up here. Now on the back of that, I've got another Christmas Eve box paper. So again, this is going to accommodate different planning styles. Maybe you're more columns and lines, and maybe you are more brainstormy, get it all out kind of person. Whatever it is, hopefully you find something that works for you here. Um, but so for your Christmas Eve box on this sheet, you have a space for the person's name and the budget, you, their, the gift idea, um, the store and the website where it can come from, and the price of that item and whether or not you've actually got it. And if you're doing a Christmas Eve box, I would also suggest to make sure that you write down getting a box on your list or a gift bag or whatever it is that you want to put those items in. If you want something like that, make sure that you have that on your list if you don't already have a box or a container to put those items in. So as you can kind of see, we're kind of going in succession here. We've got our Christmas Eve section, and then we move right into Christmas Eve. So I've got a space for a timeline here. I've got a spot for notes, to-dos, um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so that you can make sure that you are actually, you know, eating those things, preparing for those things, and planning those things. You've got it here on your list and a remember section. Now on the back of my Christmas Eve sheet, I have a menu plan. And this is kind of just looks like that timeline sheet, um, but it's specific for a menu plan. So I put it on the back of my Christmas Eve sheet so that I can easily just flip it over and I can write the time that whatever needs to go in the oven, um, the menu plan and any notes. And up here I've got what meal it is, the date, the time, and the location. So this meal plan sheet can be used for any meal that you are doing. It doesn't have to be Christmas Eve specific. So next I have this menu plan sheet. Now this is a spot where I'm going to write all of the things that we are having for that particular meal. And I've got a spot up here for the meal, the date, the time, and the location. So I have it in my Christmas Eve planner that this is going to be my Christmas Eve menu. So I'm going to write down the appetizers, the sides, the main dishes, any breads, dessert, beverages, and then I've got a spot for other. So I've got all these lines to be able to fill out so that I know what I have and I can see it all laid out in front of me. Now on the next sheet is Christmas Day. This is the big one. <laughs> it's Christmas Day. So basically this sheet just looks like the Christmas Eve one. We've got a spot for a timeline, notes, to-dos, your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and any reminders. I did not want to overplan this day. 
but I do know that some people have to stick to a timeline. Um, maybe you have lots of people to visit or places to go, things to do, and you need that timeline. Um, so I have this here to keep me in place for my meal and for kind of the day. Um, but I also have, again, I have my menu plan here so I can make sure that I'm detailed with what's going in the oven when, when things need prepared, and all of that jazz. And again, I have my menu plan for Christmas as well. So this would be filled out like probably a few weeks prior to Christmas so that I can be buying what I need ahead of time and fill this out here and this is my master list. So in the Christmas section, I also have a spot for Christmas memories because we need to remember these special moments. Um, and this is something that I really want to start doing with my family. My kiddos are little and I don't want to forget some of these special things that are happening during the day and during these special moments throughout the season. So you've got, just got this really blank spot with lots of lines to write your Christmas memories. Um, and on the back of here, this is a really great spot to add a piece of note paper so that you can continue writing. Kind of like what I've done here on the back. Now, as someone who prepares for Christmas, and if you are watching this video, and if you are planning to make a Christmas binder, this is an important sheet for you. This is your notes for next year. This is a spot that you can write out what worked and what didn't, what you need to tweak, what needs to be changed, what you need to buy, what you have way too much of. This is your notes for next year. Now, this is a sheet that ideally you will take out of this binder um, and you will store it with maybe your home management binder or in a spot where you know it will be so that you can reference this when fall comes and you are starting to think about preparing for Christmas. I personally will not be putting my binder with my Christmas stuff. My Christmas stuff gets stored in the garage and it's not easily accessible at all. So I have a spot in my kitchen where I store my home management binder and my planner and a bunch of different binders that I have for different things in my life and my Christmas binder is going to go there as well. So I won't have to take out this sheet necessarily because it will be easily accessible but remember to take this out if you store your Christmas binder in a place that you can't get it easily because this is your guidebook for next year. and I printed the note paper on the back of that so I have lots of room to write. Now, this sheet has a typo. I've already changed it and it is <laughs> good to go in the um, printable pack that you can download in the description box. Um, it says planning and not panning, uh, but I just honestly did not feel like printing a whole new sheet for that um, because this is just kind of for my eyes and I gotta let my perfection go at some point. <laughs> Um, but basically, this is a spot where you can menu plan, where you can think about what you want to have for your different events. And um, this is a place to get messy, to pour out those thoughts, to go through your cookbooks, write down a bunch of ideas, put page numbers and websites and um, notes and who's bringing what. Like, make this page messy and fill it up with all of the ideas that you have. Your menu plan page where you can write down your appetizers, your breads, your mains, your sides, that's where you put your final stuff. But this is your planning pages where you just kind of get it all out of your head. And for the menu planning, you've got a space for your event, your date, your time, and your location so that you can make this particular menu specific for that event. So then you've got a grocery shopping sheet. Um, you've got a spot for your budget, your actual, what you actually spent, if you went over budget or not, um, and any stores that you need to go to. And this is just a big blank sheet for you to write out all the things that you need when you're grocery shopping. Now, I have a sheet in here for stocking up. This, as a homemaker, is a wonderful time to stock up and fill up your cabinets with holiday goodies and Things that are on sale this time of year, so things like butter and um, icing sugar and sugar and flour and all the things, eggs and vanilla, like stuffing, I don't know, whatever it is, it's time to stock up. Um, you're going to find some rock bottom prices on certain items and this is the time where you want to buy big so that you can have those things in your pantry, in your overflow storage for later. 
So I've got um, a spot here for the amount, like how many of that item that you bought and the item itself. So for us, we tend to stock up on things like butter and I just put it in my freezer. It stays great, it's wonderful, it's awesome. But butter is going to be pretty cheap around Christmas, so I'm going to write down how many pounds of butter I buy in the amount section, and then over here I will write that I got butter. <laughs> um, and so you can really go ahead and take advantage of those sales and stock up. So next we've got a sheet for a cookie exchange. This is something that my family does every Christmas. It's um, a holiday tradition for us. We have a specific day that we have a cookie exchange. We all bake a bunch of cookies and we bring them and we basically have a girls party and we have kind of a white elephant um, gift exchange and we have so much fun. It is absolutely the highlight of, of Christmas for me. It's just, we just have such a blast. And in fact, I'm filming this video sort of near the end of October um, and we've actually already been talking about the cookie exchange because we love it so much. So. Um, if you do a cookie exchange, hopefully this sheet will work for you. I've got just lots of blank paper for you to write out anything that you need for the information that you need to know for your cookie exchange. I've got a spot up here for the date, the time, the location, and any notes. And then right on the back, what I did was I printed my recipes sheet just right on the back so that I can write my Christmas cookie exchange recipe here so I'm not searching Pinterest or my cookbooks. I've got it right here. And I've got a spot here for the recipe, um, who it's from. Maybe it's from a cookbook, or maybe it's my grandma's recipe, um, and I can, or it's Pinterest, and I can write where that is from, so I can easily source that if I need to. The temperature and the time um, of that item, and then I have spot here for my recipe. So I did not opt to put things like ingredient and time. Or like I just I left this blank so that. It could fit whatever recipe you need for this to fit. Okay, can we just talk about like one of the best parts about the holidays? Cookies and treats. <laughs> um, so this is a really great place to plan out the cookies and the treats that you are going to make for the holidays. This is a little bit different than menu planning. This is just like a spot to put like the fudge and the cookies and the truffles and whatever it is that you make for the holidays. This is a place to write down all of those ideas. Now maybe you're not going to make all of them, but you've got a spot that you are just kind of brainstorming and brain dumping and putting all of the thoughts in your head down on paper. And it's all in one area so that it's out of your head and you don't go crazy thinking about, oh, what was that? It's here. So this is your cookies and treats section. And because I know myself and I know my family, <laughs> I made um, a notes page on the back of that. Now here's just a blank notes page that I made because I like to write and in case I come across something or think about something that I need um, to write about, I've got this. And then I can also, I have lots of room to actually add actual notebook paper. Um, and then lastly, I've got a sheet for recipes. So I actually printed, I think I have a spot for 12 recipes. I printed enough pages for that. And I'm going to go ahead and add these in individually. So again, the recipe sheet has um, what recipe it is, who it's from, the temperature, and the time. And then you can go ahead and write out your recipes here. Now this is so important, and this is what's going to keep this tool being able to be used year after year after year. My recipes are all over the place. I've got recipes stored on Pinterest, I've got cookbooks, and I have um, recipe cards, and I have emails of different cookies and treats and holiday foods that we always love, but they're all scattered. And I want one specific place for all of the recipes. I want a spot to know where to go when I need directions for how to do my turkey, or my sweet potato casserole, or whatever it is, all of those holiday things I want to have here in my binder. Now you could actually just print those recipes, like if they're online, just go ahead and print them and stick them in a page protector so that they are being protected from, you know, the batter or the grease or the whatever, and keep it clean within your binder itself. So you've got your recipe sheets, and that's it basically for all of the printables. Um, in the binder itself. 
I went ahead and added a folder. It's coming up like really orange on the screen, but it's a bright red folder. It's actually a mead folder um, from Staples and it had like the five star brand here. And I just went and I cut out a Christmas tree with my vinyl cutter and then I wrote Joy to the World with my vinyl cutter as well. And I've got this folder here. Um, I am doing the Fly Lady system for um, managing my holidays. And I will talk about that in another video, but I have printed her um, uh, holiday control journal here, and I've got that in my folder as well. So that's a look at my holiday Christmas binder, whatever you would like to call it.